Okay, this is to walk you through the getting a problem statement for assignment six. Uh, first thing I did was open up Notepad++, which you can find on the uh, link to on the home screen. Then I go to the problem that it's in, and this is the one we're doing. So I'm just going to simply copy this and go ahead and put that in my Notepad++ just so I can have it. And I'll have to go back and forth then from one thing to another. Come on now. All right, so this is what we have. And the next thing we have to do is break this down into our parts. So we have assignments and we have input and we have calculations slash logic and we have output. All right, so we have all that space. Uh, output is going to be pretty easy because this is going to be our output right here. It told us exactly what it is. So I'm just going to do control C, control V. Now these numbers and the colon have to come out because they're just our practice data. If we put in that input, then they will get this output, but at least it describes the output that we're going to be uh, doing. <laughs> Okay, so we're doing, whoops, we're doing, um, whoops. So we have the number of items, and um, I could put num items in there, but what are, how are we going to get these items when we do uh, loops? Because what we're going to do is we're going to have many customers coming in. Each customer, or let's see, a customer checks out, they will see a purchase for this non taxable. So each item, each person, orders one item and so each customer and with each item is a, a iteration or a loop that we're going to be doing so this is not just number of items this is going to be a counter so i'm going to call this items count uh, anytime we find a counter so that's what we have to take a look at the data and try to figure out what it is that we're going to be outputting because if we're going to be counting something, we want it to end with count. If we want it to accumulate with something, um, then we want it to be an accumulator. And here we have total of taxable items. So if a taxable item comes in as 200, another one comes in as 300, the other one comes in as 100, that's $600 worth of taxable items. And you can see that we're accumulating it. So we had 200. Then we accumulated another three, that makes it five, and accumulated another one, that makes it six. So since that's an accumulator, we're gonna call this, um, I'm just gonna call this tax accum and get rid of the total of. Because when we finish, it's gonna have the total in it because it's gonna accumulate all the values. And then I'm gonna call this non-tax Accum because I also have to accumulate those numbers. But I'm going to get rid of that hyphen. So it'll be non tax accum. So it's important when we get to this point in the class that you start thinking about what your names are and anytime they're counters or accumulators. And then we have the, um, the total amount of sales charge. I just surprised that they don't have. They want software to keep track. You just make sure that you would think that you'd want to also have the total amount of everything. So I'm going to put that in there, even though it's not there. So, so total amount of sales charge. So the sales charge is simply going to be math. We're going to take. The amount of, of taxable items and multiply it by the sales tax rate. So sales tax, um, we can even call it total sales tax. Let's just do that. So total sales chat tax. And again, that's going to be math. And here we go. And I'm going to add another one on here, even though it, I don't know why I don't have that in the problem. Uh, grand 
total and the grand total is going to be how much money so someone doesn't have to add up all that stuff and it's just simply the adding of the so for our output here it'll be grand total and that will be $1,248. All right. I mean, you wouldn't have to have that. $1,248. All right. So that's grand total. So now we, once we have that, we have to go up again and find what our constants are. And the only number I see up here is this 8%. So that is my one assignment. So that's going to be the sales tax rate, and that's going to be equal to 0.08. Okay, and now we're ready to go. All right, there's nothing else for us to do. Come down here and say, are any of these going to be provided by input? And none of them will. All of them have been done by math. So we're going to go ahead and copy that, paste it into our calculations and add space equals space and then copy that control c and then control v it all right so and we always start with the last one because that's the easiest so the grand total is simply going to be tax accum plus non tax accum um, plus sales tax. And that's going to be total sales tax. All right, so if I add those three up, it's going to give me that. So 600, 648 gives me 1248. All right, and then the total sales tax. That's simply going to be the tax accum times sales tax rate. And then we move up. And we only have two or three things left, and that's a counter, a tax accum, and a non tax accum. And the nice thing is that these are the easiest math because anytime you have an accumulator, it's Whatever you're accumulating equals whatever you're accumulating plus whatever you're accumulating. So actually, it's, let me do it better. Um, whatever accum equals whatever accum plus whatever you're uh, um, accumulating. All right. So for non-tax accum, it's going to be non-tax accum plus, and what are we doing? Uh, the order amount. So order amount so we don't have order amount so we're going to have to ask someone what is the order amount so that's going to be input so we'll do control c control v and there's our first input uh, tax accum is also going to be very easy it's the same thing so tax accum equals tax accum plus order amount there we go. That math is done. And the counter is even the easiest because it's whatever account equals whatever account plus one. So items count equals items count plus one. All right. So, well, that was pretty easy. The thing is, um, we're not going to be doing these two at the same time. All right, so we're going to have to do either one or the other every time it goes around the loop. So we're going to have to make a decision. And we're going to have to say that um, if the order type equals um, tax, we'll make it easy, then we're going to do that accumulator. If it's not tax, then we can say else, and then non-tax. So now we have one more input. And 
and that is going to be the order type. Order type. And since we know that we want them to type in tax or uh, no tax, or tax and non-tax, let's do that. I'm going to put in parentheses here the values I want to use for that. And that's going to be either tax um, or uh, non-tax. So I want them to type in one of those two. If, it, if they type in tax, then we accumulate it, the tax. Other than that, we don't. So this is a fairly simple one. Notice that in this problem statement, there is nothing, except for the fact that there's counters and accumulators, there's no mention of loops. And that's because this, the problem statement simply is for our user to determine whether the math is going to work and whether we have the correct requirements for the, um, for the project. The other assignment that uh, we want to do is now for scope. And that's going to be um, only one um, order amount at a time. So if they said, well, we're going to take in, you know, 50, one customer is going to order 50, 25, 30, and then we have to total them up, then this will not work. This has got to be the customer says it is 100 and it's non taxable. And that's so we're going to make sure that is true. Um, only taxable and non taxable. So there's no other options except those two. And um, we can say any amount of orders. Orders better than customers. Orders. Well, that, that would be confusing. So customers. <clears throat> so we don't know how many customers are going to come in. So we can't say customer one, customer two, customer three. We have to use an iteration or a loop. So let's take a look at the problem. Actually, let's go take a look at um, not just the problem, but how do you solve this? What you want to do is you want to make sure that you go into the query problem. Actually, you should work through all four of these to get an idea of how all this works. But let's take a look at the query problem. So the query problem is fairly similar. You can see there's our counter, our accumulator, and then all our mon all our money math. And then here comes the loop. So when you're doing the flow chart, your assignments go outside the loop. This right here is going to be how you're going to initialize the loop. All your input are inside the loop. And all their outputs are outside the loop. And then you build it one piece at a time until it all works. So you notice this. Uh, flow chart is much different than or fairly different than the problem statement and that's because you have two separate functions This will let us know whether everything is actually working by putting in our test data Then when we code it, we're going to code it like this and that is we have our assumptions Then we have our initialization and Then we have our loop. Don't forget your two equal signs and then what happens inside that loop and you can see that there's a lot of stuff going on. And then, then we have all these alerts. So when you first code it, you'll code it with alerts. So you can see that it's working every time it goes around the, the loop. But your final code is going to be different. It's going to have your output all outside. And some of the math is going to be outside the loop. And that's because, well, here it didn't, but um there um, you want to have it so that our code is you're going to be actually doing two sets of code first this code make sure it works then come down here and then comment out your alerts and then pull your output outside and then you can go ahead and when you run it you'll put in number 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 and then you'll say you're done and when you're done then it'll produce this output rather than here, where it shows you the output every time it goes around. So this is our test code. Uh, if you put alerts and alert it out, when I take a look at your code and I see that, I go, ah, they've done it right. So 
um, if I don't see them, I know that you're probably not doing it right. All right, well, that's it. Uh, this isn't a very difficult problem. Very similar, though. The problem you're going to do is very similar to the Acme Rock problem, so make sure you watch that. All right, that's it for today.